If you want Fluid text that looks great across every screen size and doesn't overflow, Fluid font sizes are the way to go. This new app makes it easier than ever to set them up in Webflow, and here's how it works. So to get started, let's open our variable panel and create a few size variables. We can call these whatever we'd like, but I'll have one for my H1 font size, another for my H2 font size, and one more for my container padding. And once we have that set, we'll throw some values in here. So I'll set three rim, two rim, and six rim. And we wanna apply these variables to some different elements just to see the result. So on this H1 heading under font size, I'll apply the H1 font size variable. And for the H2 heading under font size, we'll apply H2 font size variable. And here on this uh, container for its padding, we'll apply that container padding variable. I'll hold my shift uh, key and click to apply across all sides. So now we can go ahead and open the Fluid Builder app. And if you don't have that app, you can install it under apps here and just hit search. And by default, none of our variables are fluid. So we can select any of our size variables to make them fluid. And it applies a fluid value to that font size in the variable panel. So here I can adjust what I want the H1's font size to be on desktop. So I'm gonna make this be four rim at a 90 rim screen size, which is 1440 pixels. So if I hold my up arrow key here, it increments by single pixels, 65, 66. If I hold a shift and hit the up arrow or down, it increments by entire rim values here. And inside our screen size, if we hold uh, just regular up arrow increments by single rims and holding the shift key increments by 10 digits like so. So now I'm gonna have the scale down to be two rim here on mobile, and that's gonna be at a 20 rim screen size. And so if we have other variables that were maybe in our project already in our Fluid, maybe we copied a Fluid variable from some generator here online, the app is still gonna detect those variables that were already in our project. So if I open the app here, We'll notice that it's pulled that H2 fluid font size and it's detecting what the max and min screen size is based on that font size. Now we'll notice that this one is set to dynamic and the other one is a static variable. And that just means with the dynamic one, the max and min screen sizes are saved inside the actual variable, whereas with the static one, they're not here. Now for either of those, we can create a number of variables to store the max and min screen size. This part is totally optional. We can name it whatever we'd like, but I'll call this viewport max and another for viewport min. And I'll say I want all my fluid font sizes to stop scaling up at 90 rim and stop scaling down at 20 rim. Now that we have those, they're not actually showing up in this dropdown yet. So let's relaunch the app since we added some new variables. And now we can select this viewport max as our max screen size and this viewport min as our min screen size. And we can do that across each of these different variables. And notice when I do that, this was 30 rim, it changes it based on the value we have in that variable panel. Now we can edit these from the variable panel or we can edit directly in this field. So if I change this to say 80 rim, it's updated that across each of the viewport max variables here. And it's actually changed that variable here in the variable panel like so. Now the key difference between these dynamic sizes, which have all the viewport max and min variables saved in them, and the static ones, which do not, is that if we were to change the uh, max or min screen size outside of the app, say we change this to 70 rim, for instance, then once we reopen the app, what we'll notice is that is all still connected for the dynamic font sizes, but for the static ones, it's no longer connected to that viewport max. We have to reapply the viewport max size um, when we're using the static for values. So I typically like to have them as dynamic, but you can uncheck or check these if you wanna convert all the variables in your project to dynamic or static variables um, across the whole project. Now I'll also go ahead and set this container padding variable. I'll set that to be something like, we'll say six rim here on desktop and one rim on mobile. So it really scales down and I'll connect it to the same uh, max and min variables like so. Now we do have this little accessibility check. This is something that not a lot of uh, Fluid generators give you. And that just means when we reach our max browser zoom, this value hasn't reached twice its original size like it should for accessibility. Now for any spacing related variables, we can ignore this, but for anything font size related, we wanna make sure that our max and min font sizes aren't too different from each other. And the same thing goes if you're using breakpoint font sizes instead of Fluid. If those max and min font sizes are too extreme, it won't double 
double the font size when you reach max browser zoom. So that's just something to keep in mind there. Now, this builder actually takes it up even a step further in something that a lot of, uh, or really no other fluid generators that I know of do. And that is to detect when it, the first couple times we zoom, that font size actually shrinks from an increased zoom if the font size is scaling too fast. So not only does it detect if the difference is too extreme, but it detects if our screen sizes are too close together for the font size we're using. So to solve that, you can just push the font sizes further apart to get rid of that warning. And that way, when the first couple times the user zooms, that font size increases with each zoom instead of shrinking. So that is a great check to have in there. And this app also works with reverse clamps, which um, no Fluid builders that I know of actually solve for that. And that just means if you have a smaller size on desktop and a larger size on mobile, there's actually something different that has to be done for the calculation and the fluid builder here automatically handles that for you so we can have reverse clamps if needed so now that we have that set we should have completely fluid values where everything is scaling from desktop on mobile so if we watch that container padding really starts to shrink as we go down and this is completely fluid. So if you've used previous versions of the Fluid Builder app before Webflow allowed clamps inside the variable panel, the app would save all of the code inside a fluid sizes component. So if we go ahead and open up that component and head to settings, under this text here, we'll see all of our different fluid sizes. So I'll just paste that into some notes here and I'll separate these out. So for each of these fluid sizes here, what I can do is just move them into the native variable panel. So I can select over this clamp here for my site margin and I'll head over to the variable panel under site margin here. I'll just paste that custom value in. And once I've moved these all over to the variable panel, I can delete the fluid sizes component. And when we open the app, it's going to detect the actual value now of that site margin here, depending on whatever we have set. So unfortunately, Webflow didn't allow me to leave both versions of the app up, even if I were to unlist one of the versions or upload it from a separate account. But if you'd like to continue using the old app, you can head to dashboard and then go to apps and integrations and develop. And I'll link the app file in the description below. So just hit create an app and I'll call this something like Fluid v1 and i'll add any kind of description upload any kind of image here and paste in any url here and we'll hit continue we'll turn on the designer extension and hit create and from here we want to upload the app file so i'll hit publish and we'll say uh, just uh, upload the zip file here which i'll link in the description below and we'll add a comment here just so we can upload and then once we have that set, we'll go ahead and just hit install. So in this case, I'll install across the entire workspace, hit authorize app, and then we can start using this app in our projects. So if I just open up this older project here that had the fluid sizes component, and I head over to apps, and I go ahead and launch the Fluid V1 app, we'll notice it's gonna pull in all those different variables that are saved in the fluid sizes component.